your hopes, everybody. They are wonderful. Aren't we all a little warm and tired in here? Can we address this? <laughs> it's warm and dark, and I want to take a nap. Um, been walking around in the fog a lot lately. I guess you guys have too, because of the weather. Okay, I am a dog walker. You know that. <laughs> And it's been a rough week because I recently got uh, two dogs on my route um, that I'm having some problems with. The first dog is handicapped, so I have to strap him into a wheelchair, and then he pulls himself forward with his front legs. And it's like, I love animals, you know, but I'm from the country. So when I met them, I was like, have y'all thought about shooting it? <laughs> Are you really going to pay me $15 a day to wheel around a half-dead dog? <laughs> because half of it is dead, you know? <laughs> this other dog on my route that I just got is a Great Dane. It's bigger than me, uh, weighs more than I do. Hates me, just sits in the corner and barks and growls at me. And I work for a company, so they're like, just keep going, it's going to get used to you. And I'm like, if get used to me, you mean pin me down and fuck me. <laughs> and then eat my face. <laughs> so if you guys are like, what happened to that nice girl? <laughs> Just know that that great thing raped me. And I moved back home because I think that would break me psychologically. <laughs> Um, the great thing about being a dog walker is that I have full access to people's bathroom products. Um, on Friday, I gave myself a little ear cleaning, and then, because I'm kind of paranoid and neurotic, I decided I should throw it away in a uh, street trash can. So I put them on the counter to write out my note, and left, realizing hours later that I left them there. <laughs> So, this is what Steve came home to. <laughs> hey Steve, Walter Barney was great. He did a number one and a number two. Here's some nasty Q-tips. <laughs> Have a great weekend. <laughs> um, guys, I'm lucky enough to live with my best friend from growing up. Um, when we were in high school, we used to get stoned and dress up like Star Trek characters. <laughs> now that we're adults, we get stoned and dress up like Star Trek characters. The only difference is that then it was really embarrassing, and now it's performance art. <laughs> we're working on getting a grant. <laughs> but she would always be Deanna Troy, a half-psychic character from The Next Generation. So she would say things like, I have a premonition, we're going to get stoned and listen to Woe Time. <laughs> and that's what we would do. We would do that. And then I was always seven of nine, a half board character from the Starship Voyager. So I would say things like, uh, resistance to the blunt is futile. And uh, prepare to assimilate with the reefer. <laughs> you guys like Star Trek? Can I keep, can I just do my whole set about Star Trek? Um, no, but she's great. She's, I love her. The only problem is that she is very short. Um, and so she's always asking me to get things down from high places. Which isn't fair, because it just doesn't work the other way. You know, I can't be like, hey, shorty, will you get, off, will you get that off the ground for me? You are so much closer to that thing. <laughs> Um, we got ants right now. Me and my roommate got ants. Um, but it's no big deal because we're moving in a week, so it's going to be somebody else's problem. <laughs> I'm just not going to do anything. That's okay, right? I can just let them take over the house. Um, we, I'm moving. Does anybody have a room I can rent? I prefer North Brooklyn. Um, I can do 800 and under. <laughs> Approach me after the show if you do. That would be great. Um... My landlord, Jerry, has been uh, calling me, and um, I, because we're moving, and I save his messages, and the best one I had is when I called him about the black mold two weeks ago that we found, and he said, uh, black mold, uh, it's just like asbestos, just don't touch it, that's the problem. <laughs> the problem is the children touching the black mold and the asbestos. Thank you. 
you, Jerry. We are going to move. Um, but I've been doing some dating recently. Thank you. Please, clap for me, because it is hard. I hate it. It is the worst. Can I just not do it? No, it's not an option. Um, but I, we, it's hard. It's just difficult because people are fucking weird, you know? Like last week I had dinner with a guy who claims he's never felt physical pain. <laughs> he was just like, I pay very close attention to where I'm walking. Uh, I use handrails at all times. And I stay alert and focused on the task at hand. So, you know, I stabbed him with my fork. <laughs> and I was like, you're welcome. Now you have something much more interesting to talk about. Um, <laughs> uh, but speaking of pain, um, when I first moved here, I've been here for about two months, and I got hit by a car. I did a front flip off my bike, landed on my helmet, breaking it in half. And uh, my world view was very small at the time. Um, I never do much. And I woke up on the Upper East Side to this woman going, What do you want me to do? There's nothing I can do. What do you want me to do? I was like, Get out of my face. Are you a monster? Is this a nightmare? Um, but I had to go to the emergency room, emergency room. I went back to Brooklyn, and then, like, it was obvious that, you know, my helmet had cracked, and I probably had a concussion. So I went to the emergency room, and they sent me a bill for $3,000. I didn't have health insurance, and I was really poor, so I wrote them a letter. It's like, thank you so much, Kings County Hospital. Um, I received excellent service at your facilities. Everybody was very helpful. Um, here is a check for $50. <laughs> Have a great day. Um, and then I didn't hear from them. Uh, and so I thought I had figured out the secret to getting out of hospital bills. But last week I received one for $2,950. <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm Ashley Brooke Roberts. Thank you so much.